Hello, everyone. This is Ripke Studios guest musician feature episode number four, and I am very honored to have with me my good friend and awesome musician, Mr. Peter Madcat Ruth. Hi there. Hello, everybody in internet land. How's it going in Ann Arbor there? Uh, it's nice and quiet. <laughs> yep, it is yep, quiet here, too. Well, I'm going to give a little introduction to you. I don't want to say too much because I like to, to be revealed in the stories and with the questions, but uh, Peter Madcat Ruth is a Grammy award-winning virtuoso harmonica player who, as I mentioned, lives in Ann Arbor, Music, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Ann Arbor, Michigan, <laughs> I'd say. And uh, I, my, my history with Madcat is this. There's a few interesting items. Um, I didn't know this till later, but you actually came to our school system when I was in fifth grade and performed, I discovered this in my yearbook years later. I was probably thinking about like the Dukes of Hazard and baseball at the time. Um, and then, you might not remember this either, uh, you performed at Central Michigan University one time when I was a student there, and I very sheepishly came up, and because uh, you were so amazing as a musician, and talked to you about possibly booking you at a festival I was organizing. Uh, yeah. That's the first time I, 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 I remember meeting you. And then I was fortunate enough to have you join um, my friends in the band Sukali playing Eastern fusion, yeah. Eastern Indian fusion music. Um, so with that, anything you'd like to add to that? Well, I don't remember meeting you when you were in fifth grade and I don't remember meeting you in central Michigan university, but I certainly remember meeting you at Sukali and it's a great band. Well, that was a third, <laughs> only took three times. That's not bad. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'll just go right into the questions. These will these will uh, kind of you can go long form answers, and they might get into some stories for sure. But okay. I, one thing I'm curious about is when did you start learning and playing music, becoming interested in music? Uh, mainly, uh, well, I always liked singing in school and stuff. But but when I was 11 years old, I was just crazy about the the Kingston Trio and. My uh, my brother had a an LP of the Kingston Trio, so I used to play it all the time. And the kid across the street had a ukulele, and he he got tired of the ukulele, so he gave it to my brother. And my brother played it for a few days, and then got tired of it, and then he gave it to me. And I started playing Kingston Trio songs on the ukulele at age eleven, and that that was my really start to playing music. I was just yeah, I want. I wanted to be a member of the Kingston Trio. I wanted them to change it to the Kingston Quartet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a similar story. Mine was uh, "Black Dog" by Led Zeppelin. Different, uh, different musicians, but same story. I wanted to be in the band. I, yeah. I couldn't. I probably couldn't. Couldn't have hung with those guys, though. They were crazy. Um, well, this. So that. Of, was, yeah. Well, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, that was ukulele. I started ukulele at eleven, but I really wanted to play guitar. So. Uh, I, you know, bugged my parents for a while, and probably when I was 12 or 13, probably around 13, I got a guitar and uh, a nylon string Goya guitar. It was very nice. <laughs> so I started taking guitar lessons at a local store. And uh, then when I was a freshman in high school, I started taking guitar lessons at the Old Town School of Folk Music in Chicago, because I lived in Park Ridge, Illinois, just outside Chicago. And so I started that. And uh, and then at age 15, I heard Sonny Terry and Browning McGee on the radio, and I heard Sonny Terry harmonica, and I just said, what's mm -hmm. that? I have to learn how to do that. And um, so that's how I got started. And uh, say part of the heart, what's, what's the instrument you would say is your main instrument? Oh, definitely harmonica. harmonica. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I love that. playing all those other instruments. Uh, but if you say, uh, "Is he a world class guitar player?" Uh, no, <laughs> I'm a world class guitar enthusiast. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, you have, to, you have to be able to accompany yourself sometimes, for sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, this will be a very long list, so you don't have to go through all of them. And there's going to be some pretty amazing answers here, probably. But what are some of the, in your career, from beginning to now, some of the main musical groups you've performed and toured with and recorded? Well, uh, in 1968, I met Chris Brubeck just by 
a chance encounter. And we had a jam session. He said, uh, next year, I'm going to graduate from high school. I'm going to start a band, and I want you to be in it. And I said, fine. And thinking, well, here's I gave this, this kid by name and what number, but I'll never hear from him again. And sure enough, a year later, he gives me a, he writes me a letter and uh, says, I want you to come join my band. So, uh, so I did. And so I started playing with Chris Brubeck in 1969. And we put out a record called uh, Educated Homegrown, New Heavenly Blue. Hey, I have some props here. Oh, yeah, great. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, uh-oh, it's not here. So, <laughs> oh, well. So I started playing uh, in his band, and, and we, were on, we had a record on RCA Records, and then then uh, RCA dumped dumped us for lack of sales, and uh, we got a record contract with Atlantic Records. So we put out a another New Heavenly Blue album on Atlantic Records. That was about 1970, I guess, or 72, I guess. And uh, they dumped us too, and <laughs> so we we formed a new group called Sky King and we had a record on Columbia Records. So this, I'm still in my 20s and we, I've been wow. on RCA Atlantic and Columbia Records. And that, uh, that didn't last for very long. And uh, I joined Chris Brubeck's brother's band, the Darius Brubeck Ensemble, which was a great band. Uh, and so I was then in a horn section. Huh. Uh, I mean, I was playing harmonica, but but there was a horn section in the band of harmonica, clarinet, saxophone, and bass trombone. Wow. We do horn parts, and so I was learning so much. And then uh, Dave Brubeck had us as opening act several times, and then he decided he liked it, so uh, he started using the Darius Brubeck ensemble as his backup band. It was called New Heaven. Uh, it's called Two Generations of Brubeck. Huh. And then I do have props for that. Oh, hey, right. we, we I were. Put, on, I'll put a picture up for the other one too. Whoop! Two generations of, of Brubeck, yep. and then another one. Truth is fallen, and then uh, whoop, brother, the Great Spirit made us all. So I was on those three Dave Brubeck LPs. Oh, well, there's the, there's the Sky King. Oh yeah. From, I've seen uh, that. I've seen that one. Columbia records. And, uh, and so by the time I was, you know, still in my twenties, I'd been on six major LPs and, uh, toured the world with Dave Brubeck, which is kind of mind blowing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've toured like the, I've toured the Midwest. I would say, you know, no, really? Really, but uh, I've never you know done national or or, or globally. Um, and I'll put that album. Oh, you the album you couldn't find. I can put a picture up for that, and I'll I'll yeah add those, add those into where people can find them. Um, I must say that I have never been dropped by any record label. <laughs> never. Congratulations! And I'll end that statement right there. <laughs> Uh, so uh, some of these questions will get into um, actual experiences in your pursuit of performing and playing and, and teaching music. Um, I'm curious, what places around the world have you performed? Like, have you done, have you, do you know how many countries or? Yeah, I think it's 11 countries, in like 40 states. Uh, so let me see if I can name them. Canada and Mexico. Uh England, Germany, Spain, Holland, Poland. I've been to Taiwan, uh, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, there's pro probably others. <laughs> some more. That, that's that's quite. Oh, a and bit. Brazil. 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 Uh, Brazil. Thirteen tours of Brazil. I, I've been there more than any other country. Yeah. yeah. I knew that you had gone there pretty regularly. Um, and so this, I'll ask about some specific gigs and stuff coming up. So with all those places you played, 
It could the stories could be about the performance in general, or just maybe what happened before, or traveling, whatever you want to pick. Um, before I ask those questions, though, I'm curious because I heard a story about there was, at some point there was some controversy with you regarding diatonic and chromatic harmonica. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess I know what you're talking about. I was uh, there was a uh, there was a group called SPA, the Society for the Preservation and Advancement of Harmonicas. And it's this organization that was started in Detroit. Now it's nationwide. And they were primarily interested in uh, chromatic harmonica and, and especially bands that sounded like the harmonic caps, where, where they would have a chromatic harmonica, a big chord harmonica, a bass harmonica, and they would do all this, you know, great stuff. I love that kind of stuff. The harmonic cats, harmonica rascals sorts of sort of music. And I was invited to perform at one of their festivals, but they considered the diatonic harmonica here, which is whoop, where is it? Ten yeah. hall the regular ten hall harmonica. They considered this a toy because it couldn't get all the full chromatic scale. Yeah. And so when I was invited to perform, you know, I'd already played with Dave Brubeck, I'd already toured the world, but but some of the members of the spa organization thought, well, this little 10 hall harmonica is just a toy and it shouldn't be allowed to play at our convention. And a chromatic harmonica is the bigger one with a button on the side and it yeah. changes it from a C harmonica to a C sharp harmonica. So you get all the sharps and flats and it's what Stevie Wonder plays. And uh, it's, a, it's a great instrument. I don't play it very well, but I have one. Um, so, and I've been playing it off and on for decades, but, uh, Anyway, that's another thing. But anyway, it was very controversial that I was invited to perform yeah. at this uh, this convention, and yeah. and many of the members of the organization, when I came on to play, they walked out in protest. They kind of lifted up their noses and walked out in protest. Yeah. But the the harmonic cats themselves came and sat in the front row. So it yeah. was kind of a funny uh, situation. Yeah, it's just, I always like those kind of stories because I, I remember, you know, the Dylan one and Stevie Ray Vaughan at Montreux, uh Jazz Fe or Blues and Jazz Festival. And I, I've personally been like the first band to come to a bluegrass, traditional bluegrass festival and bring drums. And it's uh -huh. always interesting, how are they going to, how is it going to go over? What's going to happen? And mm -hmm. then, of course, some Kali playing at Hiawatha last year was the first uh you know, not like a non-American traditional music band. No, well, not the first guy. They had some others, but it was different for sure. Yeah. Um, and and it, it was great. It was a wonderful weekend. Okay, back to the gig experiences. This might be hard for you because there might be so many great experiences, but do you have a, a most memorable or favorite gig that has ever happened or, or tour? Or... Well, there's, uh, as for tours out of the country, just going to Brazil so many times was amazing. Uh, and to be treated uh, like a star there that I certainly am not treated here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was on the, there's a show down there that's the equivalent of The Tonight Show. And I've been on that show three times. And it's like, have I ever been on the Tonight Show? You know, no. <laughs> Am I ever going to be invited to play on the Tonight Show, or, or you know, any any of those evening you know shows, whatever they are these days? I don't watch TV, so I don't know. But anyway, uh, no. But in Brazil, you know, I was uh, I had that experience, so that was kind of mind blowing. And then just to be with Dave Brubeck and tour around the world and play in the like the Sydney Opera House in in uh, Australia, and to play in Lincoln Center, and to play in Carnegie Hall. Uh, like what? I was just a kid, but I was doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a pretty amazing experience. That's, yeah. That is really cool. 
I have never played uh, in any of those places. <laughs> but maybe someday. I still have time. I still have time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, in contradiction to that, do you have any um, worse gig or worse musical experiences? <laughs> like bad clubs or? Yeah, uh, I remember playing a, a rock and roll club in uh, somewhere in Canada. Uh, I can't remember. Somewhere between here and Toronto. That was so filthy. We... Part of the thing was uh, we play at the club and we could sleep in the rooms upstairs. That was part of the deal. <laughs> and the rooms upstairs were so filthy. They were so disgusting. <laughs> that, that's a memory of one of the worst gigs. Oh, and then there's a time where Mad Cat and Kane, I was in a duo, Mad Cat and Kane with Sherry Kane for 24 wonderful years. And, uh, I remember one time we were playing in a kind of a restaurant situation and with, you know, some people listening and some people not listening. And a little kid, maybe nine years old or something, walks right in front of the stage and goes, ah! <laughs> and we start laughing. Yeah. We can't stop laughing. So, you know, just there's things like that. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah, those restaurant gigs can be like that for sure. I I think I've had adults do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember playing at a place in uh, in Grand Rapids, and it was Mad Cat and Kane and uh, this duo from England. Uh, they were really you know great. And we had this gig where uh, we were supposed to get eighty percent of the door. And at the end of the night, and the place was packed. And at the end of the night, they said, well, here's, you know, here's the $200 we collected for the four of you. And was, what? He said, well, 80% of the door, and we only collected, you know, that much. Yeah, yeah there was somebody not sitting there the whole time, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's. I've had that happen, too. Yeah. Well, I should ask those questions in reverse order. I should ask the best gig experience second. But anyway, we're, speaking of those, we're going to show one of the best gigs. I'm going to cut to some music here, and this is I'm going to put up the link here. But this is Peter Madcat Ruth. It's from his YouTube channel, and that's Peter Madcat Ruth. Just all one, one, one long, no capitals, right? That's right. And uh, we're going to look at the uh, something from the playlist from Madcat at seventy. All right, enjoy.
shake it, shake it now. You gotta shake it now, 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 shake it now. Everywhere, but then you mellow down easy, babe. Mellow down easy, babe. in the harmonica there with Mad Cat. All right. Turn up the heat. Let it percolate. Let's bring it to a boil. 